Well, happy Friday, everyone. Hope you're doing well and uh, had a good week. Today we're going to look at something we've probably all used at one point or another in our lives. And if you have children, you've probably used more than those of us or those of you who don't have children. It's that wonderful little invention known in, I believe, in the UK as a sticky plaster and here in North America as a Band-Aid. Uh, it's interesting how brand names tend to replace the... Uh, actual thing. In England, what we call vacuum cleaners are referred to as hoovers. Facial tissues here are referred to as Kleenex. Um, no matter what the brand is, even though Kleenex is actually the brand. So yeah, we, we tend to do that, and that's true with Band-Aids. Uh, Band-Aid is an actual brand, but many different companies make sticky plasters, if you will. But let's take a look at the history behind them, shall we? The adhesive bandage. The earliest Egyptian medical records mention band-aid bandages, soft poultices, and harder plasters of myrrh and honey spread on linen. Myrrh had a slight antiseptic action, and honey was used as an adhesive. Other early civilizations used similar devices. The Arabs later turned to searing or cauterizing wounds with hot irons and boiling oils. Not until the 16th century did the agonies of cauterization give way to bandaging again. About 1600, with the development of the microscope, germs were detected and their role in disease first studied. The need to bandage a surgical wound against airborne germs was not fully realized until Joseph Lister proved the value of hygiene in the late 19th century. Before that time, doctors had been bandaging surgical incisions with wrappings made from cuttings swept off the floors of textile mills. Many patients died. In the 1920s, a Johnson & Johnson employee, Earl Dixon, married a young woman who time and again managed to cut herself while doing housework. Dixon brought his bride gauze and tape which his company, Heating Glister, had succeeded in sterilizing. But her bandages usually fell off. Sometimes she cut herself when she was away from home. And so Dixon tried to help again by folding the gauze into a narrow pad, unrolling the tape, layering the gauze over it, and putting down a band of crinoline to keep the tape from sticking to itself. He then re-rolled the tape so that his wife could unwind and scissor off what she needed. Not long after, Dixon mentioned his creation to associates at work, and the Band-Aid was born. It was pre-cut in 1924, completely sterilized in 1939, <clears throat> spun out in sheer vinyl in 1958. Other companies soon took to manufacturing similar products, and today the sticky business of covering cuts and scratches Turns out some 4 billion bandages a year. So there you have it, the history behind the sticky plaster or adhesive bandage or band-aid, whichever way you want to refer to it. Thank you, Mr. Dixon, and uh, a big thank you to your wife, who apparently was a bit clumsy around sharp objects. And uh, But thanks to your in ingenuity and her clumsiness, we have a very handy first aid remedy for small cuts and scratches. So, hope you've enjoyed today's little story about the Band-Aid. And now I suppose you think you deserve a groaner. I haven't done a groaner for a while, so you're probably right. You probably do deserve a groaner. Alrighty. Well, a few years back, there was a fellow who discovered a lodge not far from where he lived where he could go duck hunting. Now, because he lived in an apartment, he couldn't have pets, and this lodge had bird dogs that you could rent while you did your duck hunting on their land. So this fellow thought that was pretty neat. And so he signed up and he went out for a duck hunt one day and enjoyed it so much and the dog he had that he ended up spending four days there. And the dog he had had a peculiar name. The dog was named Salesman. But Salesman was a fantastic dog and the fellow contributed the success of his duck hunting in big part to salesman and his abilities as a bird dog. Well, he had enjoyed himself so much at the end of the four days, he booked another four days in three days' time, because he had to go to work for a little bit.
Three days later, he came back and uh, signed in and asked for salesman again. He said, he's such a great dog, I'd like him. Well, the owner of the lodge said, well, I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but uh, salesman just isn't any good anymore. He's, he used to be a fantastic bird dog, but now he's terrible. And the fellow says, well, what, what happened? Like in three days, he went from being a fantastic bird dog to not worth anything? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately for the last three days, the fellow that uh, used him, instead of calling him salesman, kept calling him sales manager. And now all the dog will do is sit on his tail and bark at everybody else. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Names are important, so don't forget that. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed today's little video on band -Aid, the Band-Aid and our groaner, which really was a groaner. And uh, we'll have a fantastic weekend. So until Tuesday, when we have Tuesdays with the Pilgrim, take care, stay safe, and God bless you.